Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's Forex and Gold Fundamental and Technical Supply and Demand Analysis. If you're a new watcher, warm, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you and uh, doing something slightly different this week and this is because um, trading economics uh, don't have their, um, their week ahead. Um, analysis. So um, I guess I have given, uh, or going to go over um, some bank analysis from um, a bank that one of the banks that we watch, MUFG, uh, and talks. They talk about the key events this week, and uh, yeah. So it's uh, this is uh, something that the uh, the private members um, uh, get access to. So um, this week, uh, in the week ahead. Uh, we're looking at the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia and the Reserve Bank of New Zealand are the next G10 central banks uh, expected to tighten monetary policy further. In the week ahead, the RBA is expected to debate the merits of delivering one more larger 50 basis points hike or slowing the pace of hike to 25 basis points as the policy rate approaches their estimate of the neutral rate of at least 2.5 percent so neutral rate is basically where they think that the uh, interest rate should be uh, where it doesn't affect the economy positively or negatively it's like a you know the economy is not too hot or not too cold kind of thing a nice balance um, so the Australian market is currently pricing in 37 basis points of hikes so putting more weight on the RBA to deliver um, on the RBA delivering another 50 basis points hike so that's what we're you know is expected as we uh, usually would expect um, the market has probably priced that in you know to some degree um, and is probably looking forward to more um, of what they're likely to do within you know the the, the following um, uh, central bank uh, hikes and to what degree they're looking to hike um, we'll get into you know the the uh, Australian dollar a bit later in, in terms of uh, against the uh, US dollar I still think that the uh, um, the Aussie dollar at the moment in a risk off environment is a um, is a sell so selling the Australian dollar against the US dollar but there could be signs that things may be turning around for the dollar but again we'll get into that in a, in a little bit uh, the RBNZ is also expected to deliver another 50 basis point hike and leave the door open for another or for one final 50 basis point hike in November before slowing the pace of hikes next year and all central banks you know are going to look to probably look to slow their their hiking um, in terms of the amount of uh uh, hikes they do as well as the uh, the amount of hikes uh, or the, the you know whether it's going to be 50 basis points or 25 basis points um, because a lot of the banks like for example Australia and or especially for example New Zealand dollar um, the RBNZ has been um, uh, hiking on a hiking cycle for oh I think maybe about a year maybe over a year I think they were one of the first central banks to start their hiking cycle last year so you know it's about time that they start to uh, to pretty slow down the same thing with the Australian dollar um, the policy rate will then be approaching the RBNZ's projection for the terminal rate between 4.25 percent and 4.5 percent and uh, just this little bit here before we get into the technicals and some, uh, some more fundamentals so the main economic data release in the week ahead will be for the US economy, so that's the main data. The latest ISM surveys for uh, for both the manufacturing and services sectors will be watched closely uh, to assess if the US economy remains on course to rebound in the third in the third quarter or Q3 after contracting in the first half of the year. The drop in the US gas prices has helped to lift confidence in the services sector um, in recent months, while confidence in manufacturing sector has remained weak. So the non-farm payroll report will shed more light on tightness in the US labor market. So employment growth is expected to moderate but remain strong. So average hourly earnings growth has remained relatively stable recently, helping to dampen fears over a price wage spiral. So those are really the main um, uh, macroeconomic uh, data points that the market is focused on, or well, at least the uh, MUFG are, uh, which would probably be what a reflection of many other banks as well. 
But uh, yeah, let's get into some of the technicals and a bit more fundamentals. So um, starting off on the dollar index, dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against uh, major currencies like the uh, euro, the yen and the pound. And, uh, you know, we're zooming out over the past year um, or the year to date, really, from the uh, from the beginning of this year. And you've just seen dollar strength uh, from, you know, uh, because uh, fundamentally the dollar has been really the uh, stronger of the pair. Also, it's benefited from uh, a risk off environment. The dollar does tend to react um, in a risk off um, environment where investors will put their money into the dollar in times of uh, uncertainty, fear and doubt. So you've just had a really kind of strong dollar, which is... Um, uh, really kind of affected gold which is um strange but not strange it's logical but it's um you know I, I would have thought that gold would have done um would have probably gone up um in terms of in the last maybe six months or so but uh, i still believe that gold will uh, go up and i'll talk about that when i get to gold a bit later but looking at the dollar uh from a fundamental perspective um, you know, the Fed begins to split on the need for uh, for speed to peak rates. So discussions discussion isn't about changing course as rate hike uh, uh, definite and over tightening to show in financial conditions. Uh, Conor, uh, Coronado says, and so um, it says that the Fed uh, officials are starting to stake out different views on how fast to raise rates as they balance hot inflation against rising stress in financial markets because um uh, not to get into it too much but um and it's difficult to you know to basically try and summarize certain things in you know a minute in less than a minute but understand this um is that uh the uh, if when you when you when central banks high rates it can have a negative effect on the economy so um you know, it's yes, it's all it's all good as long as the economy can support rate hikes. But you also need to see the effect of those rate hikes play out in the economy, and and so, um, you know, with with uh, the Fed's you know rapid hikes, you know, uh, it, it actually risks missing economic shift and sealing a recession, is an opinion. So policymakers moving too fast to see the impact of actions so far right so you know because they've been hiking so aggressively to try to contain inflation that in fact you know the the effect of actually high you know uh, rate hikes on you know borrowing and lending and business costs etc um is is yet to be seen and fully materialized so you know monetary policy acts with lag yeah and may take months to be felt so this is you know quite interesting as well so fast and furious a federal reserve tightening risks slamming the economy into recession with economists worrying about its commitment uh sorry it's committing another error after being slow to respond to rampant inflation um and so uh, pretty much just summarizing you know what i said and um and yeah but it's obviously yet to be seen you've seen obviously massive you know rate hikes to try to get inflation down um but as i said the the you know when you hike interest rates as aggressively as you have and you know you make the currency expensive but then um again it can take you know maybe a, a few months or two or three or maybe five or six for it to <coughs> sorry for the effects of those rate hikes to filter through to the economy so um you know the market seems to think that um uh, you know, uh, a recession is pretty much on the cards. Um, and, you know, you shouldn't really look at the US um, uh, in a vacuum in terms of just focus on the US. Remember, if you're a currency trader, you're trading in pairs, which means that you should always understand what currency is the, the, the best, you know, out of the worst or what is the worst out of, you know, the, a bad bunch, right? So as much as you might look at the US and go, oh, well, they're heading into a recession, would it be a deep recession or will it be a mild recession or a shallow recession, right? Um, you know, who's worse off? And um, and so um, I think lots of countries are probably looking at recessions, but which one is likely to, you know, either have a shallow recession or 
um, are likely to probably avoid a recession. And those are the ones you should buy in comparison to the currencies that um, are maybe heading into or the, the economies that are heading into a deeper recession and may not get themselves out of one for a while, right? So um, for now, at least in the short term, going towards the end of the year, unless uh, data proves otherwise, my bias is still to buy the dollar and also as well, just in case you haven't watched it already, you know, it's really important that you do watch this um, this uh, this video that I've got free webinar um, and it's the three steps to generate a profitable Forex trade idea. So if you don't understand the relationship between, you know, interest rates, inflation and the economy, uh, this webinar will pretty much spell it out for you guys because this is, you know, what you need to know in terms of understanding where the trends are likely to occur. And, you know, it's amazing that traders call themselves currency traders, um, you know, and Forex traders and, you know, don't apply uh, fundamental analysis. You know, you're, you're really kind of trading blind in my, just in my opinion, of course, you know, what I say, my, my opinion's absolutely correct. But, um, you know, my hat's off to those people that can trade without fundamentals. But, um, you know, for me, fundamentals give me a massive edge over, um, uh, you know, technical traders in terms of understanding what, you know, value and what you should be buying and selling in, in the medium to long term. Anyways, um, and hopefully it does give you that advantage and it has been given adva that advantage to lots of traders in the uh, private members group that I run. So, um, getting back to the dollar, technically, you know, will this uh, this trend end? Of course, it's going to end at some point. Uh, uh, then and there will be an opportunity to potentially sell the dollar. Not too sure whether that would be you know now for me. I'm still looking just for buy trades. So any kind of pullbacks, you know, are confluences with other currencies. I guess in terms of um, uh, you know if you're looking to buy the uh, uh, the dollar yen or the dollar Swiss, for example, you want to see uh, maybe the the, the the dollar index actually come down into a demand zone and start to turn around and then that could be some confluence with regards to um you know buying the dollar yen dollar swiss maybe dollar cad uh, for example if you choose to you know buy those pairs of course you don't necessarily have to this isn't financial advice but my bias is you know still continue to the uh, to the upside and so uh if my bias is to the upside, then I'm only looking for buy trades and I'm going to ignore, you know, any kind of moves to the downside. I'm not trying to trade both sides and let's see what happens. I do want a deeper pullback and I'm, I just want to see where the monthly moving fair value is. So um, understanding where the monthly moving fair value is, which is basically just a moving average, but it's what a moving average is telling you is basically fair value, where fair value is. And uh, I tend not to trade um or take trades uh, um, if, if prices are above that monthly moving fair value unless of course I want to short this if I'm looking to short the, the dollar then yes I will but if I'm looking to buy the dollar which I am then everything above the monthly moving fair value is going to be expensive so I'm waiting for a pullback you know for some sort of confluence on that um, moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen again um, has been very uh, the dollar has been extremely strong, especially in the face of uh, uh, central bank intervention, the Bank of Japan intervening. Um, you know, uh, uh, last week or the week before. Now time is flying. So, um, will prices go higher? The higher it goes, uh, the more that the Bank of Japan will have to you know intervene to protect the devaluation of its currency. Um, so, uh, current, you know, central banks don't like when their currency devalues too much because, um, especially what I say rapidly anyway, it can help the economy, it does boost exports, but at the end of the day, um, you know, the central bank has made it known that they, you know, won't tolerate certain, you know, uh, uh, massive devaluation. So let's see how far this can, if it does actually, you know, go higher than, um, uh, let's see how high it will go. But again, as I said, I think the central bank is going to be capping that upside uh, with their in interventions. Um, so where we're at now, it it's a bit of a strange chart because we're not making higher highs or higher lows. Prices are in this auction between this high and this low. Um, and we really haven't got any strong demand or supply zone. So um, depending on which way you want to be a buyer, um, I do think that uh, if I want to be a buyer, then... Uh, 
don't know I don't know I, I really kind of hesitate to draw any demand around here as I typically would um, but I do think that there is a there is another type of demand zone that you know I don't really talk about in this video uh, daily demand videos and supply videos but it is and uh, some of the guys will notice this is a CPR demand capture pain relief um, trade setup uh, you can see where traders are caught below that area there and I do think that if prices come back to this zone uh, let me draw it properly matter of fact so it's really from this uh, low to here um, is where I would probably if I was looking to buy this pair as well I would look at, look to really kind of get involved I'm not looking to trade this pair personally um, I think there are better pairs out there to trade but if you are looking to you know buy uh, the uh, dollar against the uh, the yen then the one four one fifties to the one forty thirty sixes are probably going to be a decent area to look for potential buyers but um yeah it's not really a pair that i'm personally interested in but i'm interested in buying the dollar dollar swiss uh last week we uh, i was saying last week that pretty much you know the more times the level is touched the weaker it becomes and uh, you had this massive move to the upside um, on the dollar and then you had a bit of a pullback prices didn't actually quite touch the uh, supply zone unfortunately but it took out that um, so that yeah that supply zone but it took out the previous supply zone and so uh, with that being said again fundamentally this is not a pair that I'm looking to trade but if you are then I think yeah you'd have to really wait for if you're buying the the US dollar for prices to come down to the one uh, sorry to the 9650 areas if you're looking to short then probably back up into these areas here probably the absolute highs about around that one cent area is probably decent for itself but again this isn't the, uh, the best trade in the world simply because we've already touched um, you know a fresh area of supply and the best times to really kind of buy or sell is when you see uh, fresh areas of supply you know being um being touched right so that was a fresh area of supply prices made lower lows came back up there right same thing here they lower lows came back up first touch and then that's that you could even make an argument for uh, for this zone here from a demand zone perspective yeah prices you know spiked through but ended up holding probably a lot of uh, some liquidity hunting going on here but the demand zone ended up holding um, and then prices went to the upside so depending on where you place your stop you may or may not have been stopped out but you know if you understood about value and this being a bargain price then you would have probably ended up getting back in again and making your money back and more so um, but dollar swiss isn't something that I'm interested in personally but those are your options uh, looking at the dollar cad um, and yeah the dollar cad buying the dollar is expensive at the moment you have to really wait for a pullback I think the nearest demand zone is going to be here in fact it is there I don't think it's there but it is there and um, again we're well above the uh, the um, monthly moving fair value so for me uh, no trades um, above that not interested in that at all um, not really interested in this pair even even though out of the two if I was going to be a buyer I would be a buyer of the uh, the dollar in a risk off environment the US dollar that is in a risk off environment and you're seeing basically what's happening um, there as well also as well I did read somewhere that the Canadian dollar I think it was um we look at Citibank as well um, for one of our analysis and I think Citibank were mentioning that the uh, Canadian dollar the Bank of Canada might be uh, it's looking like they possibly may be um, looking to not hike rates or you know again just like the uh, the Australian dollars look to um, end their hiking cycle so let's see you know what happens here and against the backdrop of risk sentiment as well as a strong dollar and the you and the federal reserve continuing to hike then you're going to see you know what you're seeing um but again pullbacks into that zone is where you are um looking at where the nearest uh, supply zone to potentially short the dollar is you're looking back at you know two years and so um for me it's not really a trade or a, a level that i would look towards trying to short um, I have to have a good reason to buy the Canadian dollar um, against the US dollar and I don't so it's not a pair that I would personally look to uh, to try to short um, New Zealand dollar US dollar again um, saying this from for the past few weeks not really taking this uh, this trade either um, 
the New Zealand dollar uh, will lose against the US dollar in terms of um, risk off environment and you're seeing what's happened uh, to the downside so um, I think any pullbacks if you're looking to buy the dollar decent buys into that demand sorry that supply zone there um, yeah I think that's pretty much it if you are looking to buy the New Zealand dollar you really have to buy it based off of a change in risk sentiment but that doesn't like it's going to come anytime soon so uh, the dollar is probably still a sell on this or the likelihood so any pullbacks into the 59.50s or just above that into the six sixty cent area uh, is going to be where the shorts uh, would probably be and uh, zooming out let's look at one year there's nothing for the past well five years you're coming down to um, to five year lows <clears throat> yeah coming down to five year lows so um, we could even break that but let's see what happens but it's not really a pair that I would look to potentially buy like I said unless um, risk sentiment does change uh, of course the uh, RBNZ hiking rates and it could hike rates uh, more than uh, what is uh, priced in and that would then boost the uh, New Zealand dollar probably temporarily uh, but again I think overall you're probably going to see a more more short side <coughs> than upside excuse me pound dollar um, the pound lots to talk about with the pound I guess but I won't necessarily get into every single little detail I'm sure you guys have read up on it but um, uh, I guess just to summarize so last week you know um, you had Liz, Liz Trust come out and Quasi Quateng uh, deliver a mini budget, which the markets didn't like. And so the, the issue really was that the bond market was wondering where the, um, how the debt was gonna be repaid, right? Because if, you're, if, the, if the government are making a whole load of tax cuts, how, uh, how is the government planning to fund you know, the spending? And so there was a bit of a worry. The Bank of England stepped in, uh, started um, quantitative easing uh, again, and the market was happy with that or happier with that. But doesn't mean that uh, the the pound is a buy. In fact, I'm still uh, my bias is still to the short side with the pound. So only looking for short trades. And so um, looking back at this technically, uh, from a daily perspective, we have uh, prices heading really just back up to this uh, to this. Uh, supply zone so that's really where we are anything below that was expensive so anyone who's trying to get short around here was trying to get short intraday um, you were you know buying at expensive areas and you probably would have been um, guaranteed you would have been stopped out if you don't understand why you're buying we should be buying at fair value or above fair value so there's no point in chasing the market right regardless of whether the market is going down I mean you could obviously chase the market and make some money but personally it's not really the smart thing to do um, and um, and so I'm I really wait for kind of pullbacks I'm looking for a pullback up into these 112s if I can get if it, if it can come back into this 114 that would be fantastic for I think for a short trade again not financial advice uh, just telling you what I'm looking at but um, going back to for example the UK and one of the reasons why I'm short the UK is because the UK is the only G7 economy still smaller than its pre-COVID size. So revisions leave GDP 0.2% below where it was at the end of uh, 2019. And UK averts immediate recession with surprise expansion in quarter in the second quarter. Um, but it's only just, right? So yes it avoided a recession i think i think the market expected the, the economy to kind of show that it was uh, there was some negative growth uh, this quarter but um, in the second quarter but apparently it avoided it so the you know the, the thinking is is that they're probably going to enter it into the third quarter so uh, i'll read this bit here it says the economy grew by 0.2% in the second quarter an improvement on the 0.1 contraction first estimated the office of national statistics said uh, that means britain is not yet in recession as many had assumed so however past revisions mean uh, the level of output uh, is still 0.8% lower than previously thought and the slump is now likely to have started in the third quarter when output probably contracted because of the extra bank holiday for the queen elizabeth's funeral for queen elizabeth's funeral sorry um, bloomberg economics believes further declines are likely in the next two quarters so um, that's the likely um, 
um, direction and path of travel uh, with with the pound. Um, obviously, you know they every pretty much everyone else has you know recovered, but uh, the UK and even Germany's kind of flatlined. So um, let's see what happens with the pound, and I think the pound for me is still a sell based off of you know the economic. Um, uh, I guess uh, the economy. Although I do think I do think my personal opinion is that um, they could escape um, uh, economic contraction if the uh, fiscal policies, um, if basically if people go out and spend um, with the fiscal policies. So you know, with tax cuts, the whole point in tax cuts is that people feel richer. And then they go and spend in the economy and boosts, you know, boost retail sales and, you know, home buying and, um, and general things like that. Right. And it keeps the economy, um, keeps the economy going. So if people don't, you know, save their money and actually go and spend uh, because of these tax cuts, then you could see, in fact, some potential growth in the UK. But I think it's way too early to, uh, to start seeing that for now. And so my bias is to the uh, to the downside, and so any pullbacks on the pound are shorting opportunities, uh, in in my opinion, and that's the direction that I'm going to be trading. Of course, you could you know look at it another way, and if you are, then um, you know good for you, and just uh, just make sure you have conviction in you know your trades and you know what you're doing. But uh, for me, I think it's still shorts all the way on the pound, especially against the dollar. Anyway, uh, euro dollar. Again, um, I'm sh my bias is to get short on this. We've had a bit of a pullback of a couple of hundred pips, a few hundred pips. But if you're looking at this in, you know, over the course of the last, you know, year, it's not really a massive pullback. It's just, you know, an expected pullback, right? If you're looking at, you know, this this uh, this recent high, uh, lower high to lower low, then uh, we're probably back up to yeah, just about fair value. Um, into the bargain area in fact we're still below the monthly moving fair value as well so anything any trade setups on an intraday around here personally not taking I'm only looking to take intraday setups above uh, move monthly moving fair value so for me um, hopefully looking for at least uh, prices to come up to uh, parity and then that would be I think a really nice short opportunity and I think the further it comes higher is the cheaper it, it the euro starts to become regardless of whether um they are looking to high crates which they are so going on to the euro the eurozone inflation at double digit record piles pressure on the ecb so consumer prices rose 10 percent from a year ago in september and it was estimated at 9.7 and data will inform the ecb officials before october's rate decision so the eurozone's economic crisis intensified with the first ever reading of double digit inflation piling pressure on the european central bank to keep raising interest rates aggressively and um you know i spoke um earlier about um the federal reserve um and the fact that they're hiking rates aggressively and the um and the, and the effect that that has on um the economy uh or could have on the economy or, or typically does have on the economy and Put it this way, I think, in my opinion, the um, the U.S. economy is better placed at the moment than the uh, European economy, the eurozone economy. I know what the, there's there's data that suggests otherwise, but I do think that um, in comparison, there's a lot more risk events going on in Europe um, that could you know really hurt Europe more than risk events that are going on in the U.S. So, with that being said, of course, I could be wrong, but um, you know, I think with that being said. Um, the, uh, the 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 uh, ECB are hiking into uh, you know a lot of weakness, which I think will have uh, eventually have a negative effect, uh, or more of a negative effect, um, or, a, or a devaluing effect rather than an appreciating effect. I could be wrong again, but um, it's just a bet that I'm taking. And so the next eurozone hike is in, in focus as big move backed, and this is an ECB update. So 13 of the governing. Council's 25 members are speaking on Thursday and um, investors prime for clues on next hike, terminal rate and quantitative tightening. So um, lots going on uh, coming up, but um, I do think that the uh, euro is still a sell. I'm not saying that it's going to be a sell this week. You know, please don't um, uh, misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that prices are going to go down here. I'm, what I'm saying is, is that if price 
does come up to a zone where I would like to be a seller and a buyer of the US dollar, then that's what I'm gonna look to, uh, that's what I'm looking to take. So if prices do go up, um, it's fine, right? Because it just means that you can, you can buy the dollar against the euro for a cheaper price if you believe that the US should strengthen over the euro. But of course, you know, again, this is all data dependent and I will um, obviously be keeping my eye on the data and seeing if the buy, my bias does change, but it hasn't changed for pretty much 18 months. You know, I've had a short bias on the uh, on the euro dollar for 18 months and uh, you can see what's what's pretty much how it's played out, right? So uh, let's see what happens with that. Looking at the uh, Aussie dollar, and again, the Aussie dollar, um, I think the Australian dollar will be a buy at some point, just not now um, in terms of uh, risk sentiment. Um, but I do think that the uh, the Australian dollar is a is a decent buy. Um, well, and not against the uh, the US dollar. But um, if you are looking to uh, take this trade or trade this pair, then again, I think the uh, the, the path of these resistance is still to the downside and not because you know the trend is to the downside uh, price doesn't dictate where you know where price is going to go right it doesn't um, because uh, ultimately it comes down to you know what what the fundamentals and value is saying because if the, if the market thinks that this area is a bargain for the Australian dollar versus the US dollar then you're going to see prices do that it's just as simple as because you know by the logic of uh, technical analysis traders you know if, if if the trend is your friend um then you would continue to see just prices continue to go down and go down and go down right but what makes it turn what makes it turn is you know several things one thing being uh liquidity but the main thing is being value um and uh and bargaining cheap exchange rates right a change in the value so um any pullbacks into uh supply um if you're looking to buy a us dollar in the risk off environment um is is probably the preferred move um but if again things do turn around sentiment wise then i think the australian dollar is going to be a very good buy against um you know i think a lot of currencies uh australian dollar japanese yen again you're seeing the effects of risk off as well as the um the uh the, the intervention that this that the uh, uh bank of japan has done and uh yeah we're seeing lower highs lower lows here and uh, likely to continue seeing that for now so any i think any buyers if you're looking to buy the australian dollar um, it's going to probably be around there if you're looking to buy the japanese yen you'd really have to kind of wait for prices to pull back to that 96 area before looking at getting uh, short on the Australian dollar and buying the Japanese yen and I do think that the yen is starting or if you're not in already um, is a buy um, and especially because we've got a lot of risk events coming into the end of the year and I do think that the, the yen um, will strengthen in terms of uh, risk sentiment but let's see what happens and finally gold so gold again it's been a bit of a Sorry, a bit of a strange one um, because you would expect in risk off environment the um, that gold to be uh, supported in a risk off environment but again with with interest rates you know um, and yield I guess on the US dollar going up to you know um, going higher to at least around about four percent um, and the dollar strengthening is having a negative effect on gold as traders will n probably not like to hold gold because it doesn't pay a, pay a yield or an interest. Um, and even inflation being as high as it is, you would think that gold would be a hedge against inflation, right? But for the gold bugs out there who are watching the video, um, just remember this. And if you go back to my June video, right? Go back to my June video. Um, beginning of June or mid-June um, this was an article which basically says central banks to increase gold holdings over crisis concerns so central banks are very forward looking they're not looking you know at the next week or the next month they're looking at you know the next year these are the smartest people you know or some of the smartest people in the room right they're running the economy so emerging markets uh, central banks are worrying about everything from inflation to supply chain chaos and now what's really key is understanding this is understanding that um, you know central banks you know see gold as a reserve asset 
and will likely increase their holdings of the metal in the next 12 months, right? So they're increasing their holdings of the metal in the next 12 months, according to a survey by the World Gold Council. Remember, these guys have forced um, or tried to obviously forecast and have foresight, right? So I've spoken about this, you know, many times before. And if you don't understand um, that, you know, the banks will... Um, uh, they've started basically back in June buying, you know, they're just buying physical gold, right? They're not, they're not trading with leverage. So they don't care about being stopped out, whereas the trader does. And what they're doing is they're increasing their gold holdings, which means that if they think that gold is going to be up here in the future due to, you know, worries and concerns and risk events, then, then they're basically just buying gold for cheap. Yep, that's all they're doing, buying gold as prices get cheaper, which is what you should do if you feel that um, you're, you're getting, you know, bargain prices if you're doing investments. And so, you know, they're, they're doing it over 12 months. So, you know, whereas, you know, retail traders have a very short term mindset, um, you know, want to know, you know, why prices are going down and, you know, and things like that the gold you know the, the the central bankers and the smart money who uh, who are you know looking to buy gold are not concerned with you know what's going on this week and they're just looking at it as though well i can buy gold for cheaper for a longer time right because you know when you start to see price go higher and everyone's chasing gold they've done all their buying you know six to twelve months ago so um you know they they've got obviously scaling it takes them time because they're trading buying with such size they have to you know buy slowly um and keep their orders small so to not you know trigger the markets and things like that and these things if all central banks are buying um you know who's going to be doing the selling um you know so uh there's there's liquidity issues there's slippage issues and so these things can take time to play out but um you know again the banks aren't buying just for the you know for the for today or you know for the month they, they tend to buy for you know a good two three years in the future so um let's see what happens there for me i'm still uh long uh on gold although trading wise i'm not really necessarily trading gold but my bias is to the uh to the upside if you are trading gold i guess let me just uh uh delete all those drawings then you are, if you are buying it <coughs> then um i guess your nearest uh, zone at the moment is going to be really down from 2020 and i, and I don't really like um using uh, zones that are like two years old so i would say wait for price to prove that there's you know uh buying there and then maybe a pullback into a demand zone before looking at getting um before getting long um, but for now uh, I think uh, trying to time the bottom isn't um, isn't the best thing to do but you'd, I'd probably rather wait for price to prove that there is definitely strong buying and then wait for that pullback anyways um, actually matter of fact if you are looking to sell then waiting for price to pull back into that supply zone and um, look for a short trade there anyways guys take it easy um, I hope you enjoyed the analysis and uh, until the next video, have a good one.